Turn over the humans now, or they will surrender by force. No! The doctor yelled. You cannot harm this planet by the order of the Shadow Proclamation. They will not surrender. They will never give in. And I, I will never let you harm them. So be it, Doctor. The tree lady turned towards the Jadoon, barking at them. Conjugutanum fans. No! The tall, slender man yelled as he tugged at his constricting tree handcuffs, which were attached to the tree lady. What are you doing? Stop! And where's my Tardis? He yelled as he yanked at the branches that wound up and down his suit-clad arms, wrapping further up his body until the tree encroached around his maroon bow tie menacingly. He wriggled his head upwards, fighting against the tightening tree cuffs. The tree lady glared down at him with an evil smile upon her face. How about that, doctor? A taste of your own medicine, she snickered. The doctor struggled helplessly upwards, trying to rid himself of his ever-winding chains. Miranda, he managed to gasp out as the branches constricted around his throat. What? The sixteen-year-old girl shot up out of bed, wiping her brown-black bangs out of her face deliberately and quickly, her brown eyes bulging in surprise. You heard me, an unseen voice said agitatedly. Take off your clothes. And quickly, the voice hissed urgently. Who are you? Why can I hear you? And why on earth should I take off my clothes? I'm the doctor. You have great ears and look down. Look down? How do you mean look down? Ow! The girl yelled as she jerked her foot out from under the bed cover in surprise. What in the... Ow! She screamed louder as she yanked her sock off hurriedly, clearly in pain. As soon as she ripped it off, she threw it across the room to let it hit the wall, nervously scooting back against the headboard, grabbing a pillow as her eyes widened in evident fear. Look at it, the doctor's voice said. Look at what? Miranda addressed the ceiling, perturbed and annoyed. She was greeted with silence. She scoffed, then swallowed a bit of air before scooting toward the front of her bed slowly to peer over and look at her sock. She gasped a bit as she saw the fabric writhing on the ground of its own accord, seemingly getting smaller as she watched it. Her eyebrows nodded and she leaned a bit closer to the sock, her shaky hand reaching out to touch it. Yarg! An awful, blood-curdling sound emitted from the fabric. Ah! Miranda gasped as she retracted her hand, bringing it in toward her chest. She watched in horror as the sock folded into itself and then seemed to pop out of existence. Ow! Er, ah! She called out as she drew her other foot toward her, hastily kicking off the covers to remove the other sock, then quickly throwing it across the room. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? She ran a hand through her hair as a single tear fell from her eye, her breathing speeding up as she began to panic. Take off your clothes! The doctor's annoyed voice repeated again. I refuse to remove... Miranda choked feeling her body tighten in a corset-like fashion. Off you go! She threw the jacket, ripped off her sweatpants, then looked down at her body. That's funny. When did I put on a leotard and tights? She knitted her brows, pulling at the fabric lightly, glad it was not attacking her, but wary nonetheless. <laughs> her jacket and sweat screamed, causing Miranda to whip her head around to watch the fabric devour itself into nothingness. Don't worry about your clothing arrangements, the doctor continued. Just know that they will not harm you like the others. Well, why should I trust the voices in my head? Her panicked voice rose as she crossed the room, ebbing away from her sheet-covered bed and any other fabric-covered And what am I supposed to do? Dance the evil clothes out of existence? She raised her arms in exasperation, twisting her leg and falling to the ground, as if to prove to the apparently medicinal voice in her head that she was superhumanly uncoordinated. Ay! She cradled her foot near her body, her fist twisting in a sickening mixture of shock and pain. I'm not a voice in your head. I am a gal- A human being who knows how to save your life and the entire world who has, for seemingly bad reasons, chosen to borrow a mere spot in your head. Any problems? Nah, nah, I just, I just love when I fall on the ground and I'm surrounded by suicidal fabric. She bit back. Good, now get out of there. 
and go where? To the beach. To the beach? I've just been forced to strip down to a leotard that I have no idea how I put on after being attacked by my clothing, and you're telling me to go to the beach? The doctor didn't respond. Miranda sighed before standing up slowly, testing out her leg. Rearg! Her head shot up just in time to see the towels in her bathroom converge in on themselves. She took a glance around the room, seeing nearly every fabric-covered item doing the same thing. She grabbed her bedroom door handle and swung it open, ran through the kitchen and out the front door faster than she thought possible with such little coordination. Okay, now why am I running to the beach? Miranda managed to puff out as she continued to up her speed, feeling silly for listening to a voice in her head and willingly exerting energy. Do you want to live?